Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Two weeks ago in this chamber, I asked the First Minister about the scale of the crisis across Scotland's accident and emergency departments. The answers were not good enough. This week, it emerged that for the month of August alone, 5,000 patients spent more than half a day to be seen in a &E departments across the country. Waits of more than 12 hours for emergency treatment are completely unacceptable. Yet that is what is faced by thousands of Scots at hospitals right across the country. This government is presiding over the worst ever a &E waiting times in Scotland. So, First Minister, do you believe that the plans outlined by the Health Secretary on Tuesday will end these appalling waits? First Minister. Well, firstly, performance in our accident emergency departments is not good enough. Um, I have been candid about that, as has the Health Secretary. Our National Health Service is dealing with backlogs created by a COVID pandemic. Indeed, it is still dealing with the impact in, in many different ways of that COVID pandemic. So we continue to support the National Health Service to recover, um, and that includes accident emergency, as it does all parts of our National Health Service. Um, of course, it is incumbent on me to point out again that while there are big challenges in our NHS and in A&E departments, our A&E departments remain the best performing anywhere in here, the here. United Kingdom, here, here. which is down to the dedication and hard work Thank you. Thank you. Down to the dedication and hard work of those uh, in our National Health Service. Of course, staff numbers at, uh, are at a record high across the NHS and investment is at a record high. So while I am not complacent, the Health Secretary is not complacent, yes, we do believe uh, that the measures he set out in terms of the recovery plan update and indeed the winter plan uh, will make a positive uh, difference. Uh, finally, Presiding Officer, um, it is frankly uh, it beggars belief uh, that Douglas Ross stands here uh, today and talks about the National Health Service because I think his concern for the National Health Service today is even less convincing than it normally is because, of course, he spent much of the last week arguing for us uh, to take millions of pounds and put uh, that into the pockets of the richest people in our society, regardless of the impact that would have on our National Health Service. Douglas Ross. First Minister, please don't ever question my commitment to our National Health Service when it was just over when it was when it was just over a year ago I had to follow my wife in an ambulance as she gave birth. When it was just over a year ago that I had to see my infant child on oxygen and fed through a tube in Aberdeen Sick Kids Hospital. Don't make political points out of this when politicians are raising serious issues. Because just like last year, when the UK Armed Forces had to step in to help, we are seeing this crisis spread throughout Scotland's NHS. Long waiting times in A&E have a knock-on effect on the rest of our health system. Mm -hmm. uh, a Freedom of Information request that we've received shows that ambulances are queuing up outside hospitals because of the crisis inside in A&E. In Glasgow earlier this year, one ambulance was stuck outside the hospital for more than 13 hours because the patient couldn't be admitted. 13 hours stuck outside. And the Press and Journal revealed today that in just the last month, ambulance turnaround times at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary were at a record high. This is critical time when ambulance could be deployed to help other patients. So, First Minister, if you could answer about Scotland's NHS and about Scotland's ambulances, can you tell us what your government is doing to prevent ambulances being held up outside hospitals? First Minister. Well, of course, £45 million for the Scottish Ambulance Service was part of the winter plan that was announced, um, and that is about Scotland's National Health Service. Can I say, uh, Presiding Officer, I have enormous sympathy for the personal experience of Douglas Ross, as I do for the personal experience of anyone uh, on the National Health Service. But I am sorry, Presiding Officer, um, I do think it is reasonable to question the commitment to the National Health Service of anybody who argues for millions of pounds of taxpayers' money to go to cutting taxes for the richest in our society yep. rather than be invested yes. in the National Health Service. Thank 
it is because of this government's commitment to the National Health Service that we do not shy away from the difficulties that it is facing, largely because of the COVID pandemic that has placed these burdens on health services across the world. Uh, but that is why we are investing in our National Health Service uh, instead of giving tax cuts to the richest in our society. That is why we are supporting uh, greater recruitment in our National Health Service. Staffing numbers are at an all-time high. Uh, and of course, why uh, we are seeking a fair pay deal uh, with those who work in our National Health Service, because they do deserve it. So we will continue to do the hard work to support our National Health Service in tough times as well as in good times. And finally, Presiding Officer, we will take no lessons from the UK uh, government who are doing real damage, real damage to the National Health Service. Our NHS faces challenges, but Thank on you. easy waiting times and on many other measurements, Scotland's National Health Service is the best performing in the UK, and that is down to the dedication of those who work within it. Dr. Ross. The First Minister has been busy all week on Twitter and responding to events elsewhere, but people actually turned to First Minister's question time to hear the First Minister and her government being challenged and hopefully hear responses, but there has been absolutely nothing. So let me go back to the topic that I am focusing on today, even if the First Minister will not in her responses. Because in the FOI that I mentioned, it was also revealed that the unacceptable time people are waiting for ambulances to even arrive is getting worse and worse. Amber incidents involve patients who need an ambulance within 19 minutes. They've called, they need someone within 19 minutes. And we found one individual in our FOI from Ayrshire and Arran who was categorised as an Amber incident who waited more than 32 hours. 32 hours is more than 100 times longer than the wait he was supposed to have of 19 minutes. And the situation is also dire for those facing the most serious incidents. They are categorised as purple incidents. They are so serious that the target response time is eight minutes. But this summer, one purple incident patient in the Lothians waited more than two hours for an ambulance. Another in Glasgow waited more than an hour and a half. Others have waited close to an hour in Lanarkshire, Forth Valley, in Highlands, in Ayrshire, in Shetland. These are the most critical incidents and people's lives are on the line. They are waiting for hours when the response should be in minutes. So First Minister, can you honestly stand there and tell us that these incidents are not jeopardising people's lives? First Minister. I have been and will continue to be entirely candid uh, that instances like that are not acceptable. Our NHS is under extreme pressure, which is why it's so important that we continue to take the steps we are taking to support it. Um, Douglas Ross is just plain wrong, as anybody listening to this will know, to say I did not address uh, the issues about Scotland's NHS in my previous answers. I spoke about the £45 million of additional investment into the Scottish Ambulance Service to help specifically with winter pressures. I spoke about record investment. I spoke about uh, record numbers of staff, looking in particular at the staffing of the Scottish Ambulance Service up under this SNP government by 67.3%. Uh, uh, so that is the reality. Uh, any instance such as those uh, narrated by Douglas Ross is clearly unacceptable. Uh, but our ambulance crews responded to over 68% of their highest priority calls in under 10 minutes and over 99% of their highest priority calls in under 30 minutes. That's what the dedication of our paramedics and our ambulance technicians are uh, delivering. So we will continue to support our National Health Service uh, in the ways that I have outlined. But, presiding officer, it is not possible uh, to separate these issues from the overall funding of our National Health Service, which, like the overall funding of Scotland's budget, is dependent on decisions taken by the government at Westminster. Uh, we have already uh, had, of course, the U-turn in terms of tax cuts for the richest 1% of people uh, in the country, which Douglas Ross, this time last week, wanted this government to emulate, which would have taken millions of pounds out of the budget of our public 
services. Uh, and finally, we had thank last you. week. Thank you. If we could hear the first minister. We had last week the former uh, deputy governor, I think, of the Bank of England, saying that the spending cuts that are coming down the track from the Tory yeah. UK government could mean the end of the National yeah. Health Service as we know it. So that is the reality. This government will continue to prioritise the National Health Service, but we are doing that in the face of a Tory government that seems intent on destroying the National Health Service. Douglas Ross. We would all really benefit across Scotland if Nicola Sturgeon spent more of a Thursday morning practising her responses to the issues that really matter to people in Scotland rather than political attacks. Because the, the First Minister because the First Minister has to accept and must see that the situation is appalling in our NHS with ambulance waiting times and it's happening all over the country. The First Minister said I was narrating cases. So let's look at a case that we both should know about. On Monday, the First Minister and I were both emailed by a 78-year-old man explaining what recently happened to his 73-year-old wife. This was on Monday and we both got this email. His 73-year-old wife fell in their garden and broke her hip. She was in agony, but was told a broken hip doesn't constitute a priority to receive an ambulance. They waited for hours for that ambulance to come to take them to Aberdeen Royal Infirmary, but it never arrived. After four and a half hours, outside, in the garden, in agony, in pain, in distress, from 10 to 3 in the afternoon to half past 7 at night, they eventually gave up and called a taxi. The 78-year-old man had to get help from his neighbours to lift his wife into the taxi to eventually get her to hospital. A line in this email we both received, First Minister says, she endured even more severe pain getting into the taxi, but by this time we were getting desperate. First Minister, the email also says from this gentleman that your government should, and I quote him, hang your heads in shame. He's right, isn't he? First Minister. He's absolutely right uh, that experiences like that are not acceptable and nobody will ever hear me say uh, otherwise. Uh, our health service, including our ambulance service, is under the most extreme pressure that most of us can ever remember. And I do believe that most people understand the reasons for that. I also believe that most people understand the support that is being given to the National Health Service, and it is right and proper that that is the case. Record staffing at levels in our NHS, record investment at the winter plan that the Health Secretary set out in this chamber earlier this week. Uh, so we will continue to get on with the very serious responsibility of supporting the recovery of our National Health Service. We will always uh, respond to instances uh, where people's experiences uh, are not what they should be, and we will not shy away from that. But this government prioritises and supports the National Health Service, uh, and we will continue to do so each and every single day.